Today. Good. It's bright light. Yeah, it's I know. Hot, but you know what? There are harder jobs. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. We were just talking today. California. Hello, hello. Knows how to party. Chips is based in California. Yep. I mean, I have to ask you. You mentioned that in the production notes that Dex almost did not cast you in this film. Correct. Because he didn't believe initially that you could be as mean as Karen could possibly be. Right, so I said, get ready for the next week of your life. <laughs> I can be very unlikable. So, I mean, tell me, tell me what that experience was like, you know, trying to prove to your husband that, you know, you could be this mean, like, unfeeling, uncaring woman. Well, it was weird because I sort of vacillated between wanting him to have what he wants. So I actually, like, at one point made a list of girls. I'm like, here's who I think would be really great wives if you can't cast me. Because I want him to have his vision, you know, exactly like he wants it, but I did say, but I promise I can really be unlikable if you give me the chance. But he was also, and I think, because this is why he's a good filmmaker, he struggled with the fact that because we're a real life couple, even subconsciously would people want to see us together? Because we don't end up together, and that's not the point of the movie. You want them to separate, so he wanted to make sure that the audience was rooting for the right things. I have to ask though, did he also want to make sure that the audience could see you come out of that pool with all of that like beautiful cleavage glory? I think that, well the cleavage was my idea. He actually didn't say anything about cleavage and I said, wait a minute, okay, so Karen, I think she's very superficial. She likes the Barbie doll look for sure because she's a trophy wife and she prides herself on being a trophy wife and I want her to have a very aggressive boob job. And so I was just luckily breastfeeding at the time, and I... So it actually worked that? Yeah, I just didn't feed my kids for 12 hours. So was there any extra, like, oomph, or that all, was that all you? There, in a couple, in the scenes where I was completely clothed, there was extra oomph, because I fed the kids. But I just didn't pump for, I don't know, a day, a half a day, and then just let them go And breastfeeding boobs, there's nothing like them. There's nothing like them. It's a human anatomy thing that I can't even wrap my head around. Well, I have to give you props for that. Thank I you. mean, I will I will keep that in mind. It's I mean, I know losing weight for a role or gaining weight is very painful and it's, you know, a struggle, but I got to say, not pumping for a day and feeling like your skin is going to split, it's pretty painful as well. Well, I also have to ask you that I suffer from Asian flat butt. I do. And flapjack buns. Yes. Yes! Yes! I have to ask, Get it. can you please tell me about these butt pads? Oh yeah, they're everywhere. They're just like a padded bra for your butt. I love them. I find no reason to hide the fact that I'm wearing them. You're doing it for a cool silhouette of the dress. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, women should know about this because if they want to, it's not my secret. You know what I mean? I didn't invent the butt pad. Well, you know, it's hard for me to believe that Kristen Bell does not have extra junk in the trunk that she actually required the... No, well, only in some dresses. You know how sometimes you put something on, you're like, this fits my body well, I like the way this looks, and other times you're like, I could use a push-up bra, or I could use a butt pad, and here's the solution. Well, I love how open and honest you were Always. at this fact. I, I like sharing tips. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want everyone to be happy. Well, also, a couple of months ago, I watched an interview uh, of you when you actually spoke openly about your experiences with anxiety and depression. Uh -huh. And I just felt that that was so brave of you to come out and be very vocal about your experience. Um, you know, there's the tension that is going on in this country right now. There's a lot of people yeah. going through a lot of those same feelings and those same aspects. Yeah. What kind of advice can you give to people that may be feeling along those lines right now? I mean, I can only say what I've learned in that hiding things never does anybody any good. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. It's always the key to staying miserable, is hiding things. So first, talk about it. Yes, it's hard, but it's kind of like after a good cry, you always feel better. Just know there's a light at the end of the tunnel and know that vulnerability is always met with love and kindness. Like if you're in a fight with someone and you're calling each other names, you're gonna continue fighting. And if someone finally says, you know what? My feelings are hurt. The fight stops. Like vulnerability is really powerful. And I don't think we as humans access it enough because it's the solution to so many things. So I think before I did that interview, I felt 
I felt it was only responsible to, to say parts of my story as a human that maybe haven't been told. And I know I present this bubbly persona that I think people deserve to hear, you know, the, the, the light and the dark of it, you know? Well, thank you very much. You are a badass in this movie. Thank I you. loved it. Everybody, Kristen Bell, this is Kira Lynn, and you are watching Rolling Out. Thank you.